Let's look at the behavior of a reinforced concrete section in plastic stage. As the bending moment increases, beam behavior will change from elastic stage to elastoplastic stage, and then to plastic stage, and finally to failure. It's important to note that failure will happen when the maximum concrete strain reaches the value of 0 0.003, which is ultimate concrete strain. In this stage, we will have cracks in concrete because applied bending moment is more than cracking moment, which means we can ignore the concrete intention part. Concrete stress is more than 0.5 F'C. C. A stress uh, diagram is not linear, and a strain diagram is linear, which is an assumption. So let's look at our section here. This is what you've seen in the previous stages as well. So we have a sec um, RC section with width of B, thickness of T. We have reinforcement, which is intention, which we call AS. And then we have A prime S, which is our reinforcement in compression. Here you can see the um, strain diagram. Epsilon S was a strain of the steel in tension. Epsilon prime S was the um, strain of the steel in compression. And ultimate concrete strain is 0.003. Here you can see the stress diagram here. So as you can see, the distribution of our stress here for concrete is not linear. So FS is a stress of our steel reinforcement, which is intention. And here you can see the force related to that. And F prime S is a stress of our steel reinforcement in compression. And this is the force related to that. And this is F prime C, which is uh, a stress of the concrete in compression. And this is the force related to that. As mentioned, a stress diagram in concrete in plastic stage is nonlinear, as you can see here. So it's very difficult to calculate the value of F prime C or a stress in concrete. But there is a method to simplify this stress block. We can actually replace this actual stress block with a rectangular stress block, which is shown here, with a uniform stress of alpha times F prime C, and alpha is 0.85, and with depth of A. A is um, a factor of C, and that factor is called K1. This stress block is called Whitney stress block after the engineer who initially proposed it. This method is universally recognized. Value of K1 depends on concrete strength. So if F prime C is less than 28 MPa, K1 is 0.85. If F prime C is larger than 28 MPa, then K1 is 0.85 minus 0.007 times F prime C minus 28. Also, the value of K1 should be always larger than or equal to 0.65. Now, let's look at our section and also the stress and strain diagrams in this stage. Here you can see the reinforced concrete section with width of B and thickness of T. The direction of bending moment is like this. So we have um, a steel reinforcement in tension area, which we call AS, and in compression area, which we call A prime S. Also, you see the um, neutral axis line here. And the distance from tensile steel reinforcement from extreme compressive fiber of the concrete is shown as D. Here you can see the strain diagram 
for this section. Here, um, epsilon S is a strain of a steel reinforcement intention, and epsilon prime S is a strain of the steel reinforcement in compression. Also, you see the value of 0 0.003, which is the ultimate strain of the concrete because we are in ultimate strength design stage. Here you can see the um, stress diagram. As explained before, it has a um, rectangular shape with a uniform stress of 0.85 F prime C for concrete and depth of A, which is equal to K1 times C. So basically a factor of C. So um, as a result of this stress block, the force in concrete, which is shown as CC, is going to be equal to 0.85 F'C, which is the stress in concrete, times uh, width of the section, B, times A, which is depth of this um, rectangular shape. It is also applied in the center of this rectangular shape. So as a result of that, the distance from CC to the tensile reinforcement is going to be D minus A divided by 2. Also, you can see the C prime S, which is um, force in uh, a steel reinforcement in compression, which is equal to A prime S times F FS. So distance from C prime S to tensile steel reinforcement is D minus D prime. And D prime was our cover for um, a steel reinforcement in compression. So uh, here you can see the T, which is the force in a steel reinforcement in tension, which is equal to AS times FS. So now with all of these, how can we calculate the ultimate bending moment capacity of the beam in ultimate strength design? For this reason, we need to look at our basic mathematical formulas that we uh, had previously in the previous stages as well. The first formula was sigma fx equal to zero, which means summation of all the forces that we have in our section. So we don't have any external force, that's why we say sigma fx is equal to zero. The second one is sigma mi, which is summation of all the internal bending moments equal to sigma me, which is summation of all the external bending moment. So let's look at our first formula. This one is the force in our concrete, which is CC, which we explained here, uh, plus A prime F primes, uh, F prime S, which is our C prime S, minus AS FS, which was T, because it's in other direction, so it's going to be minus, equal to zero. Um, for the bending moment, we are taking the bending moment about this point here. So we say force in concrete times to its lever arm. So the force was, as explained before, is 0.85 F prime C times B times A. Lever arm is D minus D prime, as shown here plus um, force in a steel reinforcement in compression times its lever arm, which was shown also here, equal to our M, which is basically the bending moment capacity that we want to calculate here. So we have two equations here. We need to further simplify these equations to be able to solve this and get the value of M and C. So we, we are going to have the same approach that we had previously as well. So instead of having F, F prime S and FS, which are uh, stresses in our steel reinforcement in compression and tension, we use the formula of E times uh, epsilon. So ES times epsilon S. And similarly, for the tension, uh, we use ES times epsilon S. Then um, the next step was um, further simplifying this formula by using, instead of using the strain in steel reinforcement, we were using a factor of the strain in uh, concrete. In this case, because a strain in the concrete is 0 0.003, you can see 
this formula is going to be a lot more uh, simple to solve um, and exactly the same uh, process for epsilon s so we can use a factor of epsilon c which is 0 0.003 so the way that we were calculating, we were finding this factor was uh, by looking at um, the mathematic formula of uh, mathematic rule of the similar um, triangular shapes. So for the compressive um, strain, we were looking at this uh, triangular shape here. We were saying that this triangular shape is similar to this big triangular shape here. So basically, we can say epsilon prime s divided by c minus d prime is equal to 0 0.003 divided by um, this value, which is c. So then we can get this value easily. The same process for um, epsilon s. So we were saying that this triangular shape here is similar to the yellow one at the top. So epsilon s divided by this value, which is d minus c, is equal to 0 0.003 divided by c. So now if we uh, put these uh, values for fs and f prime s into those um, equations above, we can see we only have two parameters and we can easily get these values.